Hello and welcome to another episode of Strength in Scripture. My name is George and today we will talk about the parable of two debtors. We can find this parable in Luke chapter 7 starting with verse 40. And Jesus answered to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he replied, Say it, teacher. A money lender had two debtors, one owed 500 denarii and the other 50. When they were unable to repay, he graciously forgave them both. So which of them will love him more? Simon answered and said, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And he said to him, You have judged correctly. Turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house, you gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but she, since the time I came in, has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she anointed my feet with perfume. For this reason I say to you, her sins, which are many, have been forgiven, for she loved much, but he who is forgiven little, loves little. A short background tells us that to be a guest at the table in the Middle East was traditionally to bring honor to that home, and inviting someone to a meal was to accept them. In our society, this may be somewhat likened to hosting a formal banquet, where someone is to be the guest of honor. Simon had invited Jesus for a meal at his house. Jesus accepted his invitation to eat with him and went to his house. In those days, the roads were very dusty and Jesus most likely would have been wearing sandals. His feet would probably have been very dusty, as it was expected. It was thus customary for the host to provide their guests with some water to wash their feet, and it was also customary for hosts to give their guests a polite kiss to welcome them. Providing some oil to anoint your guest's head was also a very widespread custom. However, Simon ignores the social protocol of the day. He does not give Jesus water for his feet, or greet him with the customary kiss, or anoint his head with oil. This was an insult to Jesus. Yet the sinful woman came and honored Jesus, in contrast to Simon's lack of honor. She has washed his feet with tears, dried them with her hair, and anointed them with ointment. As we look closely at the parable itself, there are a few key aspects. The value of a denarius is approximately equivalent to an agricultural laborer's wage for the day. Thus, 500 denarii becomes over a year's salary, whereas 50 denarii is a much smaller, yet definitely not insignificant amount. Neither of the debtors could repay their debt, which put them both at the mercy of their creditor. The creditor of the parable chooses to forgive them both. The parable continues with a question to Simon, making it clear that the parable is addressed to him. The question almost demands an answer from Simon. It is a question with an obvious response the one who was forgiven more. Even when pressed to answer, Simon still does not yet understand the point. It is clear from his response that he has not really understood, nor has his heart changed. The message of this parable to Simon seems to be Jesus' words in verse 47, Her sins, which are many, have been forgiven, but he who is forgiven little loves little. Simon was in the position of having been forgiven little, and the message that he also loved little must have had been sobering to him. In the context of the narrative, the woman's lavish actions are the result of her great debt that has been forgiven. In contrast, Simon's stingy action stem from his failure to realize that he needs to be forgiven. To apply this parable to our lives, we must also see the incredible forgiveness of God. For some, seeing God's mercy is easy because their past is like that of a sinful woman or the debtor with a large debt. They know their past made them unworthy to be in relationship with God, and yet, out of His great love, they have been welcomed into His presence. Out of incredible gratitude and love, they respond lavishly honoring Jesus in every imaginable way. However, many of us have grown in the church. We are much more like Simon the Pharisee, who was compared to the debtor with a smaller debt. Like Simon, we too have difficulty seeing that we need forgiveness. 
also like Simon, we fail to honor Jesus. He is simply not a guest of honor in our lives. We struggle to realize that our little debt is still beyond our ability to pay, which puts us on equal ground with those with big debts. We stand in the need of a Savior who is willing to forgive if only we accept His grace. Then we can respond to Jesus in love out of gratitude for what He has done in our lives. The two debtors had nothing to pay with, but the creditor forgave them both. Forgiveness is all of grace. There is nothing the two debtors did to deserve the pardon. The two debtors could only beg for forgiveness. There is nothing we as sinners could do to merit God's forgiveness. Some people try to earn their salvation by penance or some other means, but we need to realize that we can't earn salvation. God only wants us to repent, and if we do, He will forgive us. We can find that in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins. He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. That doesn't mean that forgiveness costs nothing. On the contrary, it costs God everything. In the parable of the debtors, the creditor took a huge loss. On the cross, God the Father took an infinitely bigger loss when He offered a sacrifice His only Son. That is the infinitely high price of forgiveness that Jesus paid for all of our sins at the cross. Today, Christ doesn't expect us to earn salvation, but He gives it to us freely. And it's up to us to accept the invitation. And as we do, we will grow in grace and be strengthened in Him by studying the Scripture.